Hello. This week's task is we're going to use uh, images in JPEG format to create a collection. Images are a very flexible and powerful way of doing a digital library. We're going to create a collection. We'll call it Week 3. And it's going to be a collection of Sherlock Holmes stories. What we're going to use the images for is the book covers. The cover of each book is going to be an image that we're going to obtain from the Internet. To speed things up, I've already downloaded the images and put them in the Dropbox for week three in the Files folder. You'll see there's uh, one, two, three, five images all in JPEG format. You can also get these from the SharePoint website. So once you've clicked Gather and dragged in the five images into your collection, it's time to build the collection and take a look at what you have. What you'll see is the default presentation in the Titles Index of three columns. Uh, in the first column you see the little greenstone paper icon that's linked to the converted greenstone document or document text level. Uh, the second column is a thumbnail of our source files. You notice the thumbnails are all the same. This is because I made sure the original source files all had the same dimensions. This is highly important. If your files have different sizes, your thumbnails will have different sizes and your column display will be somewhat ragged. Now, I got my image sizes all the same size, an easy way, by going off to, going off to Google Images and using the exact search for images of 510 by 680 pixels, and then searching for the various book covers, in this case, A Scandal in Bohemia, and then downloading those images uh, and those are the ones you've just imported. Now, if your source file images are not the same size, you may want to adjust the size. If you use Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, it can be done in there. Uh, the GIMP, uh, which is open source for Windows, Mac, and Linux, can do it. In fact, the GIMP can make pictures that are different aspect ratios. They don't have to preserve it. Microsoft Picture Manager that comes with Office will adjust sizes, but it preserves the aspect ratio, so it's hard sometimes to get things exact. Or, there's an online app for that. Now, you're also going to need a custom banner, and for this week's task, I've created one for you called banner.png. I did this uh, not in Photoshop, but in PowerPoint. I created a text uh, box, uh, added a icon a silhouette downloaded from the internet, and then saved the whole thing as a image file. I then imported my image into the Microsoft Office Picture Manager to make sure it was the right size. And it had left a bit of a border around it, so I used the crop tool to make it actually the correct size. I also used Microsoft Office Picture Manager to downsize or resize the banner. It was too wide. It was 1,275 pixels wide. So I selected a different size from the pull-down and then saved it to give me a banner of just about the right size. Now to use that banner called banner.png, you've got to copy uh, that file from our Files folder into your Images folder for your collection which I called week three, so there's week three zero images. Also, I've got some extra files there as well. You notice I've got a picture of Conan Doyle uh, and also PDF versions of the books themselves. We're going to use this. So these are going to be associated files that are not being imported or gathered into the collection, but can be referenced from our collection because they're in the images folder for our website. Now, if you think about how you want to catalog these things, and typically you've got bibliographic, but uh, not author subject maybe might apply to our images. Uh, data was taken probably would. Uh, description about the images can go in DC description. That would be useful. And we can also think of what else would be value added. For example, we can have links, maybe to a library to borrow it, full text of an online version, Amazon to buy it, LibriVox to listen to it, YouTube to see the movie, whatever. You can do all of these things can be added, not necessarily to the index sometimes, but to what we're going to look at, the document text level. So here's how I decided to catalog my images. I grabbed a description, copied from Wikipedia, and pasted it in. 
I looked to Gutenberg to find uh, a full text version in HTML, copied the URL into DC source. I grabbed the uh, book itself from Amazon in case you want to buy it, put that in DC resource, and I grabbed a library record for it, uh, a URL, and stuck that in DC coverage. I've also put the file name of the PDF version that we copied to images into DC format. I then uh, cataloged the same record uh, using the same way I did the first one. Now, this is probably not very good use of Dublin Core. I didn't look at the best practices guide or any other things for it. I just stuck them where I wanted for now. Not great librarianship, but uh, it was going to work. Here's the third record. Notice the date format. I've just put the date in as the year. Is this a correct format for a date? Hmm. And again, the fourth row. You notice I've been putting an author and subject. I don't think we're going to make an author index because there's only one author. And the last record. Even though I'm not going to make an author index, I think I may want to display uh, the contents of DC Creator as the author. The same way with the subject. I probably want to display it. So, now that you've got the metadata all entered, it's time to design some indexes. In fact, what you're going to do to start is go to the search indexes part and delete all three search indexes. Why are you removing the full text search engine, you may ask? Ah, because JPEG images have no text, so there's no text extracted. So any search in the text index will return no results. Now, assuming that you do want a search function, we're going to create a new one that's going to search multiple metadata elements, a federated search one. We're going to use DC description, subject keywords, and DC title. Now, we're going to have to change the menu label for that, otherwise it's going to display a real mess, because the default is to actually uh, use the metadata element titles for that. Here it is. I've called it collection. I could have called it database or something. And once you finish that, you have to create and build because you're changing an index. And if we preview it, we can see we now have a search function. Now, if you, in some cases, it's don't need a search function. In some, you may just have browsable indexes. In this case, if you don't create any search um, engines, it is removed from the home page and off the menu. Now that we got the search working and we've tested it out, let's think of what kind of browsing indexes we want. We probably need a title one. Uh, maybe a date of publication would be useful to our audience. They could see the stories in order. Uh, maybe subject. I didn't really catalog the stories though, so I don't think our subject stuff is that useful right now. Um, depending on editions, maybe illustrators. Now I haven't really broken it up into different editions or things, but you could. If you were looking at a collection that would be authoritative, maybe for scholarship, uh, that kind of users. Maybe the length. Maybe you would like to read a shorter story than a long one. Um, again, what we're going to do here is dependent on our audience, who are our users, and what are their information needs. So the first step is go off to the design tab where we're going to go into the indexes, the browsing classifiers. And as usual, we remove the file name and index. You must do this always. Now you might be thinking a date index would be useful. So you select the date list index type from the pull down menu and set it to use the DC date metadata element, which we created using just YYYY. Will this work? Well, if you create and build it and click on dates, you may end up with this. See the scary dark place with the green text? You may end up with a Java problem and your server crashes. This is not fatal. It just means that maybe our date index is not working. The solution to the class crash is to do a file save, save your collection, close the GLI, shut down the web server or Java window if it's still running, and then run the GLI again. You can go back in and remove the date list index. Now it could be because dates are very, very picky, and if your dates are malformed, the date index may not work. So be careful with date indexes. Now you don't have to use the date index for date data though. What we're going to do now is create a date index using 
the AZ compact list index type. So we're back to adding a classifier, select AZ compact list from the pull down, uh, change the metadata field to be DC date, and click OK. One design change we might want to make when working with images is to get larger sized images or thumbnails on the screen. Uh, particularly if the image contains some sort of uh, semantic uh, content the user would like to be able to see, the current default size is about 100 pixels is too small. So we're going to extend that. This is done in the document plugin part. All plugins or programs that import uh, content, and each type of content has a particular plugin. Plugins have options. So if we double click the image plugin, we see one of the options is the thumbnail size. If we put a tick mark in thumbnail size, we can make it bigger. So maybe make it 200 pixels, 300 pixels, uh, and that will give us a much nicer, larger uh, image size to work with. Now we're going to create and build and preview the collection. Where our date index now works, we see the dates are all in order with the bookshelf icon. And if we drill down into a date, we see all the associated records. So in 1891, there are three publications, and we see the larger um, thumbnail of our source JPEG image. Now because the default index display is not particularly useful, it gives you file name and title, we're going to modify that format. So our first one we're going to modify for our title index, which is CL1. So I've removed the default format and added uh, two columns. Now the first column what I'm going to do is uh, put a little white space to the right of the image and I'm going to hyperlink it to the thumbnail and I'm going to display the thumbnail icon hyperlinked to document text. Now the link uh, command links whatever's between them. It operates like a hyperlink. So whatever's between there, in this case it's going to be the thumbnail icon, will be linked to the document text level. The second column of the table is going to display some metadata, title, creator, date, and the description. And I formatted a little bit with some inline style by making the font a nicer Verdana font and adding a little bold in italics. Now you can see here what the result of my first uh, bit of code is, the first line for the first column. So when the uh, book cover is displayed, if it's clicked, it leads you to the document text level. And you say, well, that's not very useful. The document has no text. Um, but what we can do is modify the format of the document text to add useful stuff. In fact, a record for this particular uh, case of identity, JPEG. And you can see the simple uh, format for our second column, really just to display some metadata in a nicer way. Now this index, the title index, is a simple list type. So it's fairly easy to format to get what you want. Now to give you an idea of where we're going with this, here's one I did from last term. You notice I've got the uh, book cover in the first column. The second column is metadata. I made some really uh, colored text for some reason, but I've got some hyperlinks to reading the book, borrowing the book, or listening to the book. So if the user clicks on one of these, that's what they get. So it's quite um, handy, provides good value to the user of this collection. Now we add that uh, value uh, stuff by modifying the second column. What I'm going to do is change the vertical alignment to the middle because we're going to have more metadata display. Uh, we still have the title, creator, date, description, but now I'm adding a bunch of hyperlinks. Now you notice the ahref. What is it linked to? Ah, so the source, when clicked, is going to go whatever value we put in DC source or DC coverage or DC resource. So the URL is held in the metadata element and all we're doing is basically making it a hyperlink and adding a text label such as read book, borrow from a library, buy from Amazon. Now uh, the download, if we want someone to download a PDF version of this, remember we copied the PDF files to the images folder and we put the file name in DC format. So the variable of underscore httpci images refers to our images folder for this collection. The file name is now in DC format. So if someone clicks the download PDF, then it opens a PDF version of the record. 
And again, the way to work is to make changes and test them. So we're going to preview this. Now you notice we don't have to rebuild because we haven't changed an index. We've only uh, changed the HTML. We click on preview and it shows us what's going on. There's our um, book covers. There's our metadata. And now we have all the hyperlinks we can test out. The next index to format is the search results. The search results are basically a list type of index like title. So we can copy and reuse our working code because it's the same type of index list. So once you've copied and pasted the HTML code from the CL1 title index into the search index, we can then do a search and test it out and we see it all looks really well and works fine. Now comes the difficult bit. A to Z compact list is different than a list index type because there's an index node, for example, the date list, we have the 1892 bookshelf, we have two levels to work with. So uh, we're going to have to do a bit more work to format this. What we have to do is use a test condition to determine whether the code should apply to the index node level, the little bookshelf thingy, or to the record index display where we're down the, uh, looking at the documents or records. So we're going to use an if expression to test for the existence of the numleaf docs variable. Now if numleaf docs is found, the expression is true, which means we're at the bookshelf index node level. So what we're going to do there in this case is display a link icon, which is the bookshelf icon and link. That will link it to the associated records. Now, if it's not true, you see the second comma, then we're at the record index level. In this case, we're going to do a link, the same link, but we're going to display the thumbnail icon and another closing link. But that link there, because it's records, now links to the document text level. So the commands are the same, but they do different things depending on where you are. The next column, we're going to repeat the same test. If it's true, numleaf dos exists, which only is true of index nodes or entries, we're going to use the highlight, which is going to bold the ex title, which is the text of the index entry, and put a space in and then display the number of matching records for that index entry. If it's not true, after the second comma, we're going to display the title, which is the record, the title of that record. Now let's test it out. Now the reason you have to do this kind of test is you cannot just write instructions because they'll apply to both levels and the result will be a big mess. You may notice also here I'm just displaying the title. Why not display the other metadata? Well, it may be a good idea to get this working first. Get your logic correct and then once this works then we can just add more code after DC title to display the additional metadata. So get it working first then we can add to it. So if it works, all we'll see is the title, something like The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle. So when we do a show preview, what do we see? It works. We have the uh, date lists, uh, dates displayed with the bookshelf icons. If we click and the number of documents they contain in brackets in italic, we click on a bookshelf, we see the related records underneath. The related records have the thumbnail icon and the title displayed beside it. Now, because working with this stuff can be complicated and easy to make mistakes, your first go around may not work, probably won't, it may be handy to keep a diary or log of this. You can use Notepad to do this. Here you notice I've got my old code pasted in and then I'm trying my different versions. And it's easy to copy and paste from here to the HTML box in Greenstone so you can try out different stuff to see how it's working. Now that I've uh, got it working, I can add the additional uh, code to display more metadata. And I could copy this probably from my working code in the title index with one small problem. I change the commas in that code to something else because the commas are going to be taken by your if uh, expression as true and false outcomes. So be wary of that. Once we add the new code, we test it out. So our preview shows that it's working pretty good. We've got the nice covers, large. We've got um, the metadata aligned to the middle. So uh, in case there's more, it doesn't take it. gives us a bit of white space around it. Um, white space, that would be interesting. We're missing a bit of white space there. We should add that back on the right here to uh, uh, put the text farther away from the image because it looks a lot nicer and is easier to read. 
so our indexes are done. However, when someone clicks on the book cover, what do they get? Not a lot. They get a uh, document header, which is the Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle, they get the document buttons, and they get a message that the document has no text. What we're going to do now is modify the format of document text to produce a record. So when they click on a, when they select something from their index, they're going to go to a record that's going to contain all sorts of neat things. The default format for the document text is a variable called text, which contains the full text, uh, the Greenstone converted full text of any source document. Now, if you had a PDF in here or a Word document, there would be a converted HTML version here in that text variable. Right now, all it contains, that text variable contains, is this document has no text. So we're going to delete it. Now, I'm going to use an older method of laying out my page here. I'm not going to use CSS, I'm going to use a table. I'm going to create a table with no borders aligned to the center. That's going to take up 90% of the page, and I'll put a little white space between the cells of 9 pixels. It's going to consist of a row with two columns right there. We see actually it's going to be three columns, but I'll put out two to start. Uh, I've set the column widths to the first one 20 and 80, aligned it up a bit, uh, put the thumbnail icon in the first one. Uh, right now that's not linked to anything, I'm just putting the thumbnail there, I don't really need it linked. You could actually put the exact original source file, but it's probably too big. Uh, my second uh, column of the table is going to have a slightly larger font in Verdana to make it look nice, and it's going to start having the metadata. Here's the rest of the code for column two. You notice it's pretty much the same as the formatted code I know works from my index display. So I can copy and paste that. Now I can test out my code by uh, doing a preview, uh, going into an index, title or date list, selecting a record, and clicking on the book cover. What this will show me is the document text. What do we have? Column one, the thumbnail icon. Column two, we have the metadata. Okay, fairly simple. Maybe we can add some more value to this. Now how about in column three, we embed a video of uh, the movie version of this record. So for example, I've got an iframe in here and with a custom height and width that if you click on it, you can watch the movie. Now where did I get this code from? Now I got my code by going to YouTube, searching for the particular episode, and then uh, clicking on the share and embed, and copying the code for the iframe uh, right there. Now you notice I created a custom size. I wanted a smaller, 320 by 240. Could have got it bigger, but I wanted it smaller. So I copied that code and I pasted it into my uh, HTML string. So we do a preview and test it out. What do we have? We have the three columns, book cover in column one, metadata in column two, and the embedded movie in column three. Now, you, you may notice that this movie is not the same as the actual record. Really what I should have done with that URL, the iframe, is put that in a metadata element so it would match each record. But what I'm doing here is just an illustration of how you could do this. Our next task is to fix up the document text by removing the document heading. Uh, I mean, you could replace it with your own code, but we're just going to delete it, and the document buttons. So now the index is working. You've got actually a nice record for uh, each, uh, well, basically item. Next is time to get a nice home page working. First task is to replace the text banner with your custom banner, which I created for you, or you can use your own. It's uh, banner.png in the images folder, which you can get to by clicking the browse for the URL to about page. Now in Greenstone terminology, the about page is the home page for your collection. The URL to home page is the icon for your collection in a web page of many digital collections on the library server. Now here I've laid out a, a simple home page again using an older method of a table. Uh, I've used a reference to the Conan Doyle image in HTTP images. I copy the content out of the Conan Doyle biography. You can do something similar and provided a little bit of formatting for it. 
And once we're done, we preview it and see the results. That's not bad. We have a nice banner, uh, some formatted text, an image, and all that. Now again, we can improve this quite a bit by changing the green stone look, getting rid of all the green stuff and doing other stuff, but don't worry about that now. We're going to do that over the next remaining weeks. So what we have here is the basics for a collection of images for a particular group of enthusiasts. Now we could also add associated material with it, um, but we'll probably do that a little bit later on, I think, next week. Yes, next week I think what we'll look at is how can we integrate these PDFs in? Do we want to add them in and put it in a search engine while keeping them separate from the images? What about the teacher's guide? So if we say we had a different audience, instead of our audience of enthusiasts, what if we had an audience of educators? Ah, then we might want to change things a little bit. But that's enough for now. We'll take up this next week.